we can convert mechanical energy or kinetic energy into electrical energy, the flow of electrons through a circuit. So we're all familiar with light bulbs in the old days anyway. Light bulbs consisted of a wire inside an evacuated metal tube like that. That's what's called an incandescent light bulb. We don't actually see very many of these kinds of light bulbs anymore. They've been replaced with compact fluorescent bulbs and LEDs. But the way this bulb produces light is uh, by pushing electrons through a circuit, uh, through the wire, and there's a little tiny wire in there, and as the electrons go through there, uh, it heats up the wire so much that the wire actually glows, and that thermal energy gets converted to radiative energy, which then provides the light that we see. But power plants, ultimately, most power plants involve some mechanical motion, that mechanical motion can come from burning a fuel, such as coal or natural gas, to produce steam to turn a generator. Uh, it can come from a windmill, where the wind causes a, 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 a turbine to spin. Uh, it can come from hydroelectric power, where water flowing through a dam turns a generator. And in this particular simple case, I'm going to be the power plant. I'm going to be turning the generator. And as I spin this, what is happening is inside here there are coils of wires moving in a magnetic field. There are magnets here. And when I have wires moving in a magnetic field, that forces charge inside those wires or electrons to move through those wires. And those electrons move through the red wire up into the light bulb through the little tiny filament and down the white wire and back again so there's a flow of electrons through the circuit and I'm actually having to do work to make that light bulb shine. I'm doing work to turn that generator. It's actually taking energy and if I unscrew the light bulb it's actually much easier for me to spin this generator without the light bulb in and if I turn the light bulb in this part over here doesn't know anything about it, right? There's nothing mechanically changing here, but it is now much harder for me to turn the generator because I literally am having to exert a force that is pushing the electrons through that light bulb. And that's what happens with large utility scale power plants. People turn on their TVs, their refrigerators, their air conditioners. That power plant has to work harder to push all of that electricity through the system if more people are connected to that electrical grid, if more people are running their refrigerators or using less energy efficient air conditioners and refrigerators, they've got to burn more fuel to provide that electricity. Just as I have to work harder to turn this crank when the light bulb is screwed in, and it's super easy to turn it when the light bulb is not screwed in. So we can see that uh, also here, this equivalent of that mechanical energy to make electrical energy. Here I've got a couple of batteries. We're all familiar with batteries. There's stored chemical potential energy in the batteries that can be converted into electrical potential energy if I close a circuit. So I've got one end of the battery hooked up to this light bulb here. When I hook the other end of the battery up to the light bulb, we can see that it Close. So I'm taking chemical potential energy, converted into electrical energy, which makes this light bulb glow. I can also make the light bulb glow mechanically by connecting a generator to the light bulb. And this is a different version of the same thing that we've got over here. When I spin it, you can see that the glow of the light bulb depends on how hard how much energy I'm putting in. If I spin it slowly, the light bulb dims, uh, shines dimly. If I spin it fast, it's more energy in the same amount of time, the light bulb shines brighter. I've got a fan as well that I can use. And this is not me mechanically spinning that fan. It is me pushing electrons through these wires that causes the electric motor that the fan is attached to to spin. And if I spin this the other way, the electrons move in the other direction 
and the current is reversed and the fan goes in the other direction as well. So it really does take energy to run electrical devices. And ultimately, most of our electrical energy comes from the mechanical energy of a large spinning generator and that mechanical energy comes from stored chemical potential energy in the case of fossil fuel power plants. It can also come from stored nuclear energy in the case of nuclear power plants to boil water. Uh, it can come from the mechanical energy of wind moving past a windmill. 